Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1990 action film Navy Seals. Now, this is one of those films that I watched countless times growing up when I was a kid. This and Top Gun were in constant rotation for me, uh, and... For that reason alone, I definitely do have some nostalgia for Navy SEALs. Probably more nostalgia than most people do. Um, but I still think this film is not anywhere near as bad as people make it out to be, nostalgia aside. I get a kick out of the, the clerk's reference. You know, where the guy in the video store, he's just like, Ooh, Navy SEALs! Like, I get a kick out of that. And I know for a lot of people, like, that's the only time they really remember this movie like when they think about navy seals they just think about that scene in clerks they don't even actually think about the movie and a good chunk of uh of people haven't even watched the film but even though clerks is knocking the movie and saying it's just for you know dumb people who like dumb action movies this isn't really that crappy or that terrible of a movie it's one of those films where it could have been better but it definitely has more merits than a lot of people uh give it especially when it comes to critics at the time like this film got really bad reviews and i would say to me personally this is still like the best film about the seals uh, at least the one that is the most entertaining and there are a lot of Navy SEALs movies that have come out after uh, this film did. It's directed by Louis Teague. And Louis Teague, you know, he's the same guy who directed Cujo, for instance. This, this film has some good direction. It's not great. I think in some of the action sequences, it's a little um, lacking in terms of the uh explosive energy like some of the action sequences are a little too uh standard and just really not that impressive in terms of the way that they're shot so they're not as exciting as they could be because there really isn't a lot of effort that's put into creating some different kind of uh, camera setups or angles to try to put you more in the action or or add some extra adrenaline to the scenes. And the more dramatic moments, especially the romantic scenes, really fall flat. But there's a good car chase near the end. Uh, I, I, I feel it's actually arguably the best action sequence in the entire movie. Uh, there definitely are some moments where there's a bit of spectacle, like the opening of the film. Uh, and... Some of the other uh, uh, scenes that are just strewn throughout the movie, the golfing montage, the scene with Hawkins when he's stealing his car back from the car hauler, um, and the various different training sequences with the SEALs when they're uh, uh, doing training. Not necessarily the stuff where, you know, it's shot on location. Although there are some moments there as well when uh, they are supposedly uh, in enemy ground and uh, the, the way that the sequences are shot with the crumbling buildings in the background uh, are, are definitely uh, pretty striking. Uh, and of course, the, the the big stunt sequence where they all jump out of the plane, that's another scene that's, that has some really good direction in it. But yeah, there are some moments where the direction is, is kind of lacking and not really the best. Now, the screenplay by Chuck Farrer and Gary Goldman, it's not completely terrible. Like, I think at, at the end of the day, it's a decent script. But I definitely feel it's very top heavy in terms of the strengths of this screenplay. The majority of the strength with this script is with these characters, with this team of SEALs and their camaraderie and their different personalities and their different skills. 
Like that is the strength of this screenplay. Uh, Hawkins and Kurt Coran and uh, Leary and uh, Rexer and, and God uh, and uh, Billy. Like the, that's where the strength of the film lies is in the, the seals themselves and their friendship and their teamwork as a seal team. The action, when it is there, is inconsistent. Uh, there are some okay shootouts, but they're not anything spectacular or amazing or really that memorable. The best action sequence is at, at the end of the film, and really it's just a kind of an extended chase sequence. Uh, and I would say that is the standout action scene. So in some ways, I definitely saved the best for last. It's a very tense and thrilling uh, car chase through uh, a, a war-torn city. But a lot of the action prior to that is just kind of there. Um, the romance between uh, Koran and uh, this other uh, female reporter character named Claire Varens, it's dull. It's boring, and it really just feels like they were trying to capture the success of Top Gun. And while I'm mentioning that, a lot of this script is clearly trying to to tap into that Top Gun uh, success, and it's not as successful because it just feels like it's trying to be a clone or trying to copy the same formula. So you got the stuff with. Uh, Michael Bean and Joanne Wally Kilmer's characters and the romance falls flat and it's not nowhere near as sizzling or scintillating as Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis and Top Gun. You've got a scene where the SEALs play a game uh, uh, and are having fun and, and messing around with one another and it's just a montage and instead of it being volleyball it's a game of golf on golf carts. And initially that was going to be a football game, a game of touch football, which I find to be kind of interesting because that's what happened in Top Gun Maverick. But yeah, they decided not to do the touch football game because they were like, that's too much like Top Gun. So they were even aware of this and they still copied the formula. You have this one character in the film who's got a wife and he's reluctant about going on the mission and then he winds up dying and you have the funeral. So that's another thing where it feels like they're trying to, you know, be like Top Gun with the sudden death of a of a character, but it's nowhere near as effective as the death of Goose because you barely get to know Billy. And it just doesn't, it just comes out of left field and doesn't really feel like an earned, uh, big death scene. Uh, and there are some other issues like the villain. There's nothing to this guy. I, I, I don't even remember his name. Uh, was it Shahid? Was that who it was? I think that's, yeah. Yeah. It was Shahid. Ben Shahid. Just a very generic uh, uh, Arabic or Arabic uh, a villain bad guy. Like literally nothing to this guy whatsoever. Just a, your typical villain from the, from the Middle East who just is a terrorist. And that's really about it. Nothing to this character. Not really much to make him that intimidating either. Just feels kind of like an also ran. Just nothing kind of villain like they don't even try to make him like this big deal on one hand it's kind of refreshing but the but on the other hand it's like of all the villains you're choosing this guy that looks like he's just like the cousin of like the real villain you know that kind of thing um and there's this whole stuff with stinger missiles and they really focus on that a little too much and that gets tedious but 
I can still have fun with this movie because I like the cast and I like these characters. I like the SEAL team and I like their back and forth. I like the antagonistic uh, banter with Coran and Hawkins and the other guys and on the team. The, the action could have been better, uh, but it's still serviceable. It's still kind of exciting and fun to watch. Although I will be honest, I think they've seen where uh, Hawkins steals his car back from a car hauler is a lot more exciting than a lot of the shootouts at uh, a fair amount of points in the film, especially early in the movie, like in the first like 30 to 40 minutes. There's some good stunts as well, like some good crazy stunt work, like the scene where they jump. Uh, and, do, and then they do the halo jump uh, out of the plane. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those movies where the script, it's serviceable. It's decent enough, but it does definitely not live up to its full potential. Because you got some good characters here. They got some good back and forth. You, you got potential for some really exciting, thrilling action sequences. And there's not really a lot of exciting, thrilling action sequences, except for maybe one or two scenes. And the other scenes just feel kind of standard and kind of been there, done that. And then a lot of it's just they're waiting to go on another mission. They're playing golf. They're hanging out at a bar. The You focus on Koran and then his whole budding relationship with this reporter and then they have the stuff with Coran and Hawkins and how their friendship is starting to fall apart and it's just one of those things where I think if they just focused more on the action and more on these SEAL team characters and their backstories and their friendship and all of that and beefed up the villain and made him feel like he's a bigger deal or actually more of a threat than and and didn't really spend so much time with this romance and the, this boring stuff with the stinger missiles i think this film really would have had potential to be a action classic but it it doesn't go that route so it just it just feels like a film where from a screenplay and narrative perspective, it, it, it just didn't go all the way. Now, the cast, though, I think is really solid. I think it's a great cast. I mean, Charlie Sheen, who at this time was just a ton of charisma and a ton of fun to watch in pretty much anything that he was in. This film was no exception, just a total wild card. And... He had the best lines of dialogue, best one-liners. Uh, I really like his character, Hawkins. He's a badass, but he's also uh, a smart type of character who uh, y you might think that, oh, he's not the most intelligent, but he's clever in a different way, you know, that kind of thing. Like, he's, he's he finds a way to get out of situations in ways that, are rather clever and rather uh, fun uh, that show that despite his lunkheadedness and despite the fact that it seems like he's just one of those dumb kind of characters, he's clever in his own way and he's a badass and he has uh, a lot of wit and charisma. Michael Bean, I've always been a big fan of his. Uh, this was Actually, the first film I think I remember seeing him in, other than The Abyss, and just from his his performance in this, I really was drawn to him, and I really liked uh, what what he brought to the table as an actor. He plays the commander, James Coran, and I really liked his performance. I liked his character, too. I think Bean is probably the most believable when it comes to the cast members in terms of being an actual seal, you know, embodying a lot of that, a lot of that um, just instinctual and just not necessarily cold, but 
let's just say procedural type of uh of um approach to life as well as uh the mission like he was a great commander you know he 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 was the glue that held the whole team together and i, I just felt like it just felt it played across as something that was just so genuine when it comes to how bean played this character uh, I'm not blaming him for the romance that didn't work because he tried his best, um, but it just didn't really didn't really click. Uh, but when it comes to the stuff with him and his team, and especially the moments where he lets his guard down, see that's the thing about this performance that I that I really like is that there are there are scenes where he's very stoic and he's very rigid because he's you know he's the commander and. Is essentially, uh, in a lot of ways, kind of their boss. But then there are moments where he's, you know, drinking beers and having fun with it with the rest of the guys, and and I, I just like that dynamic. Joanne Wiley Kilmer, the performance isn't bad, and you know, I I think that there are some moments between her and Michael Bean that show some potential and some semblance of a spark but there's not enough to really make it feel like something that is particularly that resonant uh but her performance isn't bad by any means it's actually decent rick rosovich who was also in top gun uh <laughs> and to be honest I, I think that you could see this as like a, a a loose sequel to top gun like slider he he uh uh he f flunked and didn't make it in Top Gun, and then he just became a Navy SEAL. Because it's it's like the exact same kind of character. Like, Rick Rosovich, it, it almost seems like he's playing the same character here. Uh, even though he's, I think he's the, the yeah, he's the core, the core man. So he's like the, the, med the medic of the group. But it's the same kind of slider uh, personality. Uh, Cyril O'Reilly, he plays Rexer, the explosives guy. Um... He's the one that I would say is one of the more forgettable uh, uh, members of the team, along with Ramos. Uh, but he's still fine enough. I think he still has some good chemistry with the rest of the 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 SEAL team. Bill Paxton, uh, I really like his extended cameo, which is really what this is, is the sniper god. Because he's got this big-ass fucking sniper rifle that just kicks ass and just takes names and just blows people away in epic fashion uh i definitely felt more when he died in this film his character died than dennis haysbert's character because they tried to make it a big deal about billy played by dennis haysbert and i just didn't really feel this and this i didn't really feel the same way about his death as i did about god i think it's probably because of how he died uh i forgot to mention this when i was talking about the script but another reason why that just didn't work for me is because of the way that he died he died in such a lame anticlimactic sort of way i he like died off screen or got shot in just a situation that seemed rather uh lame so it wasn't like he died in a blaze of glory or anything. It was some kind of miscommunication, some kind of thing that happened where he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then he wound up being dead because of it. And it just it just came across as something that was, wasn't really as effective as I think the writers thought it was. And Dennis Haysbert's performance is kind of like that, too. It's like. It's fine, but compared to Michael Bean or Charlie Sheen or Bill Paxton or even Rick Rosovich, like it, his performance is really not on the same level. Uh, but I will say that I I I, I thought Dennis Haysbert had more of a presence than Paul Sanchez as Ram Ramos or or Silo or O'Reilly or, or as as Rexer. Um, and the villain played by Nicholas Cady, who plays Ben Shahid. Easily one of the most forgettable, nothing to it, villain performances in in an action film that I can think of. 
the the most memorable thing about him is the, I guess just his appearance, as he's got you know this goatee, and like short hair, and that's really about it. It's not his character. It's not his acting. I mean, even the way that he dies is rather uh, lackluster. It's just some lame underwater struggle where he winds up getting strangled and suffocated to death underwater by Hawkins. So yeah, nothing. Just weak ass villain. I, I maybe they were trying to be more realistic, but that was just a wrong choice for Navy Seals, a film which had its initial uh, uh, genesis in the realm of canon films because originally it was going to be a canon films movie called seals and was going to star kevin bacon but then canon films ran into financial trouble and then canon was not able to do the movie anymore and so then it turned into navy seals and for a film that had canon roots like you needed somebody like Richard Lynch or some kind of over the top villain or something like why, why go the realistic route, especially when you have scenes that are just complete and total fantasy. Like the, the moment where Hawkins steals his car back from the car hauler, that's not realistic in any capacity whatsoever. And so is some of the other scenes in the movie. So just, just, just embrace the over the top nature of, of, of the screenplay and the story and hire a over the top actor who can have more of a screen presence and can actually provide a memorable performance and feel like a formidable foe for this team of seals instead of just like a henchman of the real bad guy. The film has uh, some some all right cinematography by John A. Alonzo. I would say the cinematography is at its best when it comes to shooting the war torn uh, city uh, near the end of the movie, uh, you know, and uh, or a few of the other moments in the film. Um, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of the best moments are. And Lebanon when it comes to like the visuals in terms of cinematography the editing by Don Zimmerman it's one of those jobs where it's not gonna blow you away but it works it's the type of editing where it's got a, a bit of finesse to it it's definitely got some skill behind it but it's not anything that's too flashy and I think it's sometimes in the film that can make some of the action scenes a little dull. So I feel that it could have maybe benefited from a little more flashy edits. Um, the film's like 113 minutes and it does have some moments where it does kind of trip over its own feet or run out of ammunition and just kind of runs empty a little or runs into the ground. A lot of that deals with the romantic scenes and uh, the stuff involving the stinger missiles and the political uh, uh, aspect of the script. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily call it boring. Uh, I, I thought I think the film is relatively entertaining. It's got a good score by Sylvester Leve, uh, a lot of synth stuff, but I think it really works with the movie. Uh, there are also some moments of orchestral uh, um, composition here and and those moments are actually pretty epic and i would say uh really do match the heroism and and of 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 the navy seals and and really do add an extra element and another level to uh the the action sequences the score by sylvester leve is good it's a good score but i love this soundtrack this is one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. I wore this tape out alongside uh, the soundtrack for Top Gun and Audio Cassette. Um, so many great tracks. You got two just absolutely amazing tracks by Mr. Big. Uh, Strike Like Lightning and Shadows. Both of those songs are some of Mr. Big's best. Strike like lightning. The thunder's in your eyes. 
Straight to the heart now. Lightning cracks the sky. Great song. Love it. Um, there are other really nice tracks on this, like Go Ends Dragon, uh, Hardline by uh, Richie Havens, uh, Tempt Me If You Want To by Lisa Hartman. Um, the Boys Are Back in Town, the cover of uh, that classic by Bon Jovi. And another one of my favorites, uh, a, a sappy song. It's a sappy love song, but I, I've always liked it by Planet 3 called I Don't Want to Say Goodnight. I, I don't want to say goodnight. And it's something I can't fight. But there's nothing good about goodbye. Oh, I don't want to say goodnight. <laughs> so yeah, love this soundtrack. Um, it, it's, it's one of those soundtracks of my youth uh, with Top Gun and Over the Top and Streets of Fire. So I would say the soundtrack, the, the, uh, the OST is something that I will always have a special place in my heart for. And I will say that I love the soundtrack for Navy SEALs nowadays more than uh, the film. Like, I used to love this film growing up as a kid. It was like one of my favorites. I, I watched it all the time on VHS. But as an adult, eh, I've kind of soured on some aspects of it. I, I don't think it's as good as it could be. But the soundtrack, though, I, I could pop that CD in or put that on on iTunes and listen to it and never get tired of it. Love this soundtrack. The film, it gets a lot of shit. It gets a lot of flack and in large part due to the the scene in Clerks, which I, I can get, I understand. It got a lot of bad reviews when it came out. It has like an 18 percent of Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is way too low this is not that bad of an action movie in fact i've i've seen action films that have come out in the past five years that are a million times worse than navy seals so i would say if you like 80s or 90s action films and you're a fan of something like top gun this is this is something that i feel is right up your alley and you should definitely check out sometime um but yeah, that's my review of Navy SEALs, and until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.